I'm going to kick shame you for the stabbing fetish. <laughs> That's my fetish. I'm going to kick shame you for the stabbing fetish. I'm not in shape, but I don't know how to perform an abortion. <laughs> I trimmed some of those down that I this, had a problem with. This is all very true things to be said. Yeah. See, like this one, you said giggity at the end. That's my fetish. And I took that out because I didn't like the way that job. sounded. Because it's super hot, you should be able to fuck one time. <laughs> <laughs> I played most of these for you last week. That's the only real new one I got from uh, last week's uh, In the Cold of the Night talk. I'm going yeah. to kick shame you for the stabbing fetish. <laughs> at the end of that, you scream okay. But <laughs> yeah, I think I, that would probably be better with that back end. I think that works better with it back end. <laughs> Here, let's try it. I'm going to kick shame you for the stabbing fetish, okay? Yeah, yeah. I like the okay better, yeah. Yeah, that, that accents it nicely. So that wall, that's a pretty good idea. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. What did I say that? <laughs> What's funny is I leave that sit for a while and then I play it for you like every time. I'm like, every couple fuck? of weeks and every time you're like, when the fuck did I say <laughs> How that? How the fuck did that happen? Yeah, and you're not even, I don't even think you're referencing like the, the wall wall the, thing. The wall that everything else is talking about i think like you're you're talking about a retaining wall or uh, something. something about a movie yeah yeah something out of a film but like that specific line i'm like ooh, ooh he's gonna yeah. hate that i'm yeah, using yeah. that oh man no what what yeah. the hell yeah i needed to torture you a little bit because i was having a hard time putting my game face on this week your suffering makes me happy matt <laughs> fuck shit all right well <laughs> Let's get on with it. <laughs> Might as well. I'm like the Jason Voorhees. He's just going to keep hacking me away for some reason I still get back up. <laughs> and also your own mama's body. The following show will destroy your self-worth with excessive expletives, overtly descriptive sexual deviance, and more desperation for external validation than any so-called entertainment should ever be allowed. <laughs> Talentless losers who are about as insightful and provocative as a comatose jellyfish. Cinema Psyops. A tendency to deprave and corrupt those whose minds are open to such immoral influences and to whose hands a publication of this sort may fall. So if someone of a dirty bird gets hold of your stuff and it makes them a dirtier bird, then it's labeled obscene. Encouraging the lowest, most base, and animalistic of desires to all who will listen. Because we, as a society, have decided that a cinema psyops represents our base and vulgar impulses, and that acknowledging our use of it rattles our collective conscience. I was trying my best to make a positive impact in the lives of others, but secretly I was involved in a relationship that was taking over my life. Cinema Psyops. It was leaving me wounded and depressed, unable to even manage the relationships that mattered to me. Auditory vermin infesting every aspect of the human condition, spreading their filth and foul disease. The Black Plague Podcasting. Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. Welcome to the 239th straight week of this stupid fucking show that is Cinema PsyOps. I'm the man who runs Barter Town. I'm Court, and sitting across from me at the table is a man who wishes he was half as sexy as the ugliest Jason ever, Matt. Fair. It's fair. <laughs> it's a fair assessment on my looks. I, I don't know. If we're going to offend someone that actually may have some of the same characteristics as Jason, I guess we just won't go camping in their lake. Yeah, exactly. Anywhere and, near their lake. And there's no danger danger to that because we don't fucking camp. Oh, I camp. Oh, you do? Not now, but I used to. Oh, okay. See, I, I don't. I've gotten so used to creature comforts these days that I don't do that, but I've done my fair share of some severely extreme camping. See, I never did extreme camping. I guess the closest I get is to cabins on the lake, but that's about... You see, that's not even really... That's not real camping. I mean, that, I even know that's not real camping. That's as close to camping as I like to get is to have a cabin with an actual bed yeah. and a fireplace and all of that now. Mm-hmm. 
But in my youth, I camped on a ledge on the top of a mountain in the dead of winter with a sleeping bag and a tarp. You know, I think the psycho killer Jason would actually respect that. Leave you alone. <laughs> Maybe like, what's that? Mo- that motherfucker's f- have fun, dude. I'm going to go raid the cabin where it's nice and warm in there. And I'm going to get in there. <laughs> you, you, you fucking deal with this outside bullshit. Uh, possibly. I, I don't know. I, he'd probably still fucking murder me. But then again, I was up there with a bunch of other folks that were just doing the camping thing as well. Yeah. And I mean, like the craziest thing that we did was build a sauna, like a makeshift sauna and like like a fire pit in there and, like and a, hang out. Like a sauna in there. Yeah. Uh, it was a friend of my family who his family did this as like a tribute thing because this is something that I guess that like a grandfather did or something like that. And I just got to tag along on a couple of these adventures and these same guys got me to do Australian style repelling where you run straight down the wall. Oh, wow. Yeah. This was before I developed any phobias or fears. Because yeah, I, I was mean, because I'm like, no, that's a hard pass for me. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know exactly when my anxiety kicked in. I think it was shortly after I realized that I'm doomed. It, it's when you realize you can't die. I, think, I guess. At a certain age, you think, you know, death is so far away, nothing's going to happen. But there are times when, like, my heights anxiety or something like that will tweak and, and trigger. But at the same time, I'm like, fuck it. I want to die anyway, so I don't care. Yeah. But like, maybe I, it's totally not, that's not the it. way you want to die, though. Yeah, I don't. You still want to die, but the way might not be the way you want to go. I mean, the way I would really like to go is just to fall asleep and never fucking wake up. So, like, I never even see it coming. Yeah. Like, preferably tonight or tomorrow. I mean, yeah. Within the next couple of days. You'd want to, you know, I'd, you know, you want to go in your sleep. Not like all the people in the car you were driving who went screaming and scared. <laughs> well, I mean, if they were trying to wake me up, they kind of deserve what they get. <laughs> I actually have fallen asleep while driving and almost died. I I did too once. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I uh, uh, I w- when I went to college, it was like three hours away from where I lived. And there was one day I went and it came back in town for an Easter dinner, and then I left same day. It f- all full of like fucking just tons of food. And yeah, I had to pull. I like dozed off three times, and I had to pull off to a rest stop to sleep for a little bit because I was gonna kill myself. Oh no, I actually fell asleep. I actually yeah, I had mean, a crash, but I survived it. Oh, you crashed. Yeah. See, I didn't crash. I went yeah. off the road at a really high speed and almost crashed. But. I was super sick and I didn't sleep the night before at all. And I was one of those fucking capitalistic fucking jobs where you have to show up or you get fired. Yeah. I went in and I did half my shift and then went home and had to take the whole day unpaid. Yeah. Just even though I worked for like four hours. That's horseshit. Yeah, That's well. probably against the law. Yeah. But what was I going to do? Yeah. I got fired after my car crash anyway from there. So, uh, but I fell asleep on the way home because it was a long fucking drive home from the shitty fucking job that I shouldn't have been keeping anyway. Mm-hmm. Basically, the car flipped over and the whole passenger side of the car hit and landed hard. And if I weren't in the section that I was in on the driver's side, I would be dead. Damn. If anybody else was riding with me, they were dead. They would have been dead too. Jesus. Yeah. I, I came to in the mid air with the car inverted, seeing the ground slowly rushing at me in what felt like slow motion because of my adrenaline. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, this would look so fucking awesome if I weren't in the middle of this crash right now. <laughs> right before I hit and got knocked out twice. Court, court right before the car lands. Movie idea. And then crash. <laughs> no, it was like, this looks so fucking cool. I really hope this isn't going to hurt. Yeah. That's all the time I had left in my head. Yeah, every car wreck I've ever been in, that always thought went through my head too. I wonder what this looks like outside of the car. And I hope this doesn't hurt too bad. <laughs> <laughs> something along those lines, yeah. I like hit a telephone pole or something. And I woke up when I hit the telephone pole, but I hit it and it bashed my face off the steering wheel Oof. knocked myself out came to had enough time to be like why do i taste blood yeah. holy shit this looks cool i hope this doesn't hurt too bad landed again was out <laughs> cold came to with the car inverted mm-hmm. and had to figure out how to get the fuck out of my car hanging yeah. upside down yeah and like basically was like okay well i can feel everything it hurts my heart's pounding and i can barely move my tongue in my mouth because i bit a huge chunk out of oh, it, it was god all i swollen. hate it yeah yeah it was it was a brutal fucking crash but yeah i survived it and uh ever since then matt i don't drive tired yes that is <laughs> i yeah yeah i was uh on the it's interstate why i get pissy when i want to leave because i'm getting tired yeah at any of these like party things that are at your place yeah and my wife wants to stay <laughs> and i'm like no this is the window and it is closing now i have enough in me to get us home yeah either you're staying here for the night or you're leaving with me now yeah i uh yeah when i was like i was doing like 80 down the interstate and yeah i fell asleep and then just 
I mean, I literally was going right into the like, the ditch because I'm out in the middle of nowhere. So the rumble strip actually but, saved your life. Yeah, the rumble strip saved my life, or else I'd be I I guarantee I'd be dead by now. Oh, I probably shouldn't. No, I, I can tell this story. She's no longer with us, so it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I told you I have like three or four girlfriends, like ex girlfriends that have died from either drugs or, or alcohol. Is it, is it just the town you come from? Is it just gobble <sighs> people up like that? Well, and having to admit that you're no longer with me really takes its toll. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's the town, it's um just I guess the kind of person that gets attracted to me. I don't know. But uh I maybe a, the kind of person you're attracted to at the time as well. Possibly, I don't know. Speaking of rumble strips, and this is actually kind of a pleasant story other than the fact that I just told everybody she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh I had a, a girlfriend who um in a particular vehicle that I would drive uh-huh. if I got on the rumble strip rather liked the way that that felt at a certain speed. Oh, <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. Yeah. Okay. Because the way the car was set up, the vibration from the rumble strip went in the right direction. It would jiggle. It would, it would it jiggle would the sh- bits. It would shake and, and it, vibrate in just the right it, it way. It would work on her mysterious lady parts. Yeah, but it was only on like a specific highway, yeah. and I had to go a specific speed yeah. down this highway. And God damn it, if I didn't almost get tickets to make that girl happy. Uh, man. Uh, yeah, man. Hey, listen, <laughs> so you gotta, whatever you do to keep the girl happy, man. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. So speaking of happy women. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're covering a movie called Christina. Christina. This is apparently... Christine, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's Christina. Is it? Yeah, it's Christina. Yeah, it is Christina. Yeah. I thought you'd just say Christine. I'm like, well, now I'm going to say yes myself. <laughs> Well, you should uh, at all times. I always do. So Christina is a Spanish film. It was made yes. in Spain. Yes. Now, according to some things that I've seen that Jules Shepard, the star of the film, mm-hmm. who you would recognize as the blue haired Mohawk girl, girl with the from blue dress from Return, Return of the Living, Living Dead. Dead. Yep. Yeah. And she was in a couple of other B movies and stuff like that. But I read a lot about this. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently this was, I guess, made for t- direct release to the Playboy channel. Yeah. I wonder how many of these movies existed that the Playboy channel paid for specifically like their own version of softcore sex films that they could broadcast. Well, apparently whoever it was, like somebody who held her ticket home was pretty much holding that away from her until she completed every nude scene that they wanted. Right. And there was also some talk about one of the producers was like talking about the save money on the production that her and him should have a hotel room together. Yeah. And I'm like, that's shady AF, dude. That's shady AF AF. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get into it as we talk about it, but they don't let her wear clothing the entire time for this film, practically. Yeah. She wears, like, an outfit just long enough for you to go, oh, that's horrible. That's and a horrible looking outfit. Then it's either ripped off of her or yeah. she takes it off or someone yeah. takes it off of her. Yeah. Or it just cuts to a different scene where she's in a more really revealing outfit that's yeah. really nothing. Yeah. That's like, yeah, her boobs are just pretty much out this entire movie. I mean, like, I want to say thank you, but there's a lot of scenes where I'm like, this is not right movie. This like, is not okay. Yeah. And I want to I want to talk about about that as well but I will say this when you do get to see her naked and it feels okay that it doesn't feel like the context of the movie makes you want to be greasy with it yeah holy shit thank you movie yeah thank you movie yeah. I mean yeah I mean I'm glad this film exists I'm glad it got released to Blu-ray for those moments alone yeah but there's plenty of things that happen in this film that we're going to be talking about that I'm pretty uncomfortable about the message that it's sending yeah the message of this movie was really fucked up yeah it was it's just like when we were going through last week yeah kind of. yeah yeah kind of, yeah yeah so i feel like i'm going to make you very uncomfortable with some things that i'm about to say I, besides the reveal once again that all my girlfriends are dead i almost died in a car crash and one of them liked to have the vibration of the rumble strip of the car is it weird none of that information a surprises me b makes me feel uncomfortable i think i've been doing this show for too long or c i may have already told you some of these anecdotes off the air so this is more for the audience anyway or d i have a heart on let's just get to the commercials already i have a ragey direction I, yeah I do. Thank you, me. (laughs) All right. Well, on that very disgusting note, we're going to play the Legion Patreon (laughs) ad. We'll have a little bit of music that sort of fits in with the feeling of Christina. Oh, we got music? Well, yeah. Uh, I found some more stuff that fits. I'm I'm getting stuff out there. All right. And when we come back, we will have the 35 second sort of trailer. This will keep it quiet. (laughs) Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me Cutting a New Show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs... 
costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. I could have taken that right out of the movie. For you all, really you know? could have. It yeah, sounds exactly like all the exactly music. like it. Like it could have been just her getting ready to take a shower and just kind of walking around, looking at just, her body in a mirror. And just her laid in a bed, caressing her body. <laughs> I mean, all stuff that I'm into watching. Yeah, as same. long as she's this one. whole movie could have just been her laid in a bed, caressing her body for an hour and a half, and we'd still have a pretty good show today. <laughs> Lord knows, I would watch that quite a bit. <laughs> Almost as much as I would not want to watch this trailer again. I guess. <laughs> okay. Fuck it. I don't care anymore. And this, my friends, I presume you already know her, is Christina Von Bell, the so-called playgirl of the Western world. Wherever she goes and whatever she does, Christina makes the headlines. It isn't my fault. All I want is quiet life. And a few rags to wear and a man to use me. I was getting really excited. That's it. Everything, that's it. Everything is like, so Christina, a new film, blah, blah, blah. And that, that's it. That's, that's your fucking trailer. And pretty much all my clips, too. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About that. Um, How did you even have nine clips in this movie? I how work- is that even possible? There's so little dialogue, and most of it is talking about how amazing her body is. I worked at it really hard. <laughs> Apparently, you worked really hard to not have to work hard. I don't know. That's working hard, man. I have to fucking do all the editing for the clips and shit. (laughs) Yeah, you probably missed the days when I did it. I really do. (laughs) I don't. Do the review. Yeah. All right. Fine. Fuck it. Christina. All right. Well, we start with a disco, and she's just pretty much in an open blouse with her boobs out, dancing with different guys. She's wearing a jacket with no shirt. Yeah, like a sport coat with no shirt underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the positions, her nipples are popping out left and right on both sides, and her boobs are swinging in and out of the framing you, of the jacket. I mean, you can't. Awesome. That, that's. I mean, it's awesome, but you're gonna have to leave the premises, man. That's just not sanitary. <laughs> <laughs> it's also Europe, so... No, that, oh, oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. It's Europe. It's fine. Okay, I'm, nothing sanitary no, over nothing there. Nothing to see here, folks. Go about your business. <laughs> you got uh, to shake the, the fear of infection out of your head right now yeah. and just enjoy the titties swinging about and That's all that right. sweat dripping Well, then I got to shake the whole Western, uh, you know, American raised, you know, to be fearful of the female body, so... Well, that's your own Wisconsin baggage. I don't got any of that. <laughs> I'm fine with what I was seeing in that. Yeah, well, no, I'm fine, too. The only problem I had was, one, the music sucked, and two, the outfits were atrocious. Yes. Everything Jesus. else I was fine with. Just, well, I mean, what is it? It was the 80s. I mean, you're not going to get much, I mean. Like 1984, this yeah. movie was made so, in, I mean, or released in. I mean, fuck, just outfits sucked back in the early 80s. <laughs> um, we get an introduction to Christina, and that is our first clip. Meet Christina Van Bell, unquestionably one of the world's richest women. And also one of the most controversial. Heiress to an immense fortune, head of a worldwide publishing empire, Christina is seldom out of the news. Hello? (laughs) Tell me, Miss Van Bell, how does it feel to already possess what most people dream about? It can be rather boring. And what do you dream about? That's my secret. But you must have certain preferences. Confidentially, I like men. And they like me, too. 
Christina believes in exposing the facts, the bare facts, and quite frequently, the naked truth. Wherever she goes and whatever she does, Christina makes the headlines. It isn't my fault. All I want is quiet life and a few rags to wear and a man to use me and amuse me. The ultimate jet setter, Christina doesn't always fly a jet, but she does believe in a fast takeoff. From London to Los Angeles, from Pango Pango to Paris, is the world of Christina Van Bell. You'll be seeing more of me soon. <laughs> In the south of France. What will Christina be up to next? So basically, she's fucking Paris Hilton. Yeah. Only she's an heiress of a different sort. And supposedly she works, though, because she runs the magazine as well. Well, yeah, but I guess she inherited it. And they yeah. don't really talk about how the whole premise of the movie is just a giant excuse to be like, she's basically a nympho and everything that's about to happen is like a big fever sex dream that she wants. Yeah. Like, that's how the film is trying to sell the things you were about yes. to see. Uh, I have a very serious problem with one of the lines where she says she wanted a man to use her yeah and, and then amuse, amuse her. her like okay that banter works wonderfully if you are a wrestling fucking promo yeah right yeah you know yeah but in all reality does anyone really want to be used or do they want to have a pretend use i mean no one really wants to be used maybe someone has a kink to be used but it, it, that's a kink where they want it in this special space that's safe and then when it's done they want to go back to their loving relationship right well they make her seem like a complete completely vapid, empty-headed yeah. sex doll yeah. that just happens to be this rich party doll at the same time. Exactly. Like, they make her really hard to give a fuck about at all at the very start of this film. Oh, I could give a shit less about any character of this entire fucking movie. Yeah, I'm only watching it for the nudity. Yeah, same. During that clip, we have lots of travel, cars, and planes, and boats, and she's topless through most of it, and it's very lifestyles of the rich and famous. Um, rich and shameless. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do have to say that some of the stuff is really interesting, like her driving the boat while topless. Yeah. But like everything that they're saying there, all the sexual innuendo, they were finding an excuse to show a shot of her doing something. Is this the sequence where she's standing topless in front of the Eiffel Tower for no fucking reason other yeah. than just to have her standing there? Yes, exactly. So it's it's basically like Robin Lech. Yeah, it's, looking, Rob, it's a Robin Leach. It's no, a no, Lech. Lech. Because oh. he's all about trying to. Robin Lech. To, yeah, because yeah, he's he all was. about. I think he's dead now. <laughs> no, it's Robin Leach. Oh. I'm saying this guy that's talking. Oh. Oh, is Robin oh, I Lech. got you now. Okay, yeah. God, yeah I have yeah, to yeah. explain the jokes for you. You're slow on the uptake there. Oh, motherfucker. Jesus. Listen, I got to finish this Mountain Dew, all right? Then I'll be on with you. <laughs> Loosen that hockey mask. <laughs> um, yeah, I just like, I love the part where she's, she's, uh, she has her secret that she likes men. I'm like, you know, I'm, that's clearly not a secret I'm, I'm from the start there, like, of the film. I've known you for two seconds and I can already tell that's not a secret. <laughs> a secret would be like that you don't actually like sex, you just like to tease the fuck out of everyone around you. This, that would be a secret. The secret would be if she dropped this whole facade and was actually like a fucking double agent who was fucking poisoning all important people and shit like that. Now that would be a movie I want to watch. Yeah, right? Where the fuck is that movie? I think it's called Black Widow. You're going to see that shortly. Awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, we then cut to we're in the mountains and, uh, nah, I mean, the hills and all that. And uh, guys, Wait, she... you're not just talking about her breasts here, right? No, no, no. I'm not talking about, like, geographical. Oh, she's driving through the through mountains. Through the mountains. Okay. Yeah, and a guy sees her and calls out to her and he chases after her and they kind of have like a car chase slash race. Did you recognize the guy that calls out to I her? I know I've seen him. Yeah. But I can't, I know it's been from one of these films. I just can't remember which one. Okay. That particular actor, is it Ian something? Strauss or Strauss or something? I can't remember exactly what his um, Anglo-sized name is, but he's been in two Juan Picard Simone films. And I know for a fact that you've seen them both. Uh -huh. Both of those Juan Picard Simone Simone films. What are they titled? One of them was the film Pieces. He was the main dude that everybody was all like boning crazy for and he was all over Susan Day George trying to get all up on her stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, That's the yeah. one with the chainsaw carving people up yes. and then he makes a puzzle out of like That's various right. spots of women. Yeah. So he was like the main guy in that that was like trying to get up on Susan Day George's undercover cop chick. That's right. Now the other film that he was in, you would know it under a different title, but it was called Extraterrestrial Visitors is like the main release that it was that it was like an E.T. knockoff mm -hmm. that you've seen in probably your favorite episode of MST3K ever, Pod People. Yeah! 
It stinks. It stinks. <laughs> that actor. Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah. Anyway, after a uh, quick car chase, they, he kind of uh, slides loose to control the car a little bit after she somewhat cuts him off, and he hits his head against the steering wheel, and he appears to be knocked out. So when she checks on him, she, of course, to make him feel better, starts blowing him. As you do. As you do. Now, the reason I brought up my particular car accident, yeah. Matt, it's, it's, is, is that, that what if, you needed? If that would have happened significantly after I wrecked the only ride to work that I had that I couldn't afford to replace, yeah. that meant that I was probably going to lose my apartment, uh huh. that probably would have helped me, you know. <laughs> it would have, would have been like, okay. Would have helped me feel a but little bit better. But for this guy, it was not time yet. And he says to, he didn't want it right now. It wasn't time. Uh, <laughs> then as they talk. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's always it's time. It's always time, right? Yeah. yeah right. Unless the penis is missing, <laughs> it's always time always for time. a blowjob. Uh, as they talk, they said uh, he invites her back to his villa, and she says yes, and then he goes, cool, and then he gets in his car, takes off, and resumes the race, and she chases after him. See, this is living proof that that particular character couldn't deal with the fact that she outdid him as a driver. Yeah. So he refused a blowjob just to prove his prowess as a man as a driver. I'm telling you, the patriarchy is the devil. This guy even denies you blowjobs. The guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah. (laughs) Fuck the patriarchy. Um, Anyway. uh, (laughs) Down with patriarchy, up with (laughs) blowjobs. A clip. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, we have a walk on the beach where they recap some of their history in our next clip. Where have you been, Leo? Well, that is apart from the front pages of the magazines and the society columns. Hmm? <laughs> Involved with a different jet setter every day? Jealous? Perhaps yes. I'm not jealous. I really have missed you. No kidding. And the way we parted last time was well, it was really heavy. I know. And I was sick for weeks. Well, days anyway. <laughs> but now we're back together. So let's forget the past, shall we? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, man, Doc, this is heavy. <laughs> heavy, there's that word again. Is there something wrong with the gravity in the future? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember that line exactly. Anyway, they go at it for a bit on the beach, and then he decides... Encouraging sand to enter yeah. various orifices of whoever is laying down, yeah, getting but, railed. Before they get to the railing part, they decide to head back to the villa for dinner. And also so she can hose out the sand from her ass crack and various yeah. other things like that. But anyway, she meets his friends, and that is going to be our next clip. Wow. Patrick, where have you been? We were ready to call the police. You've been gone so long. As a matter of fact, I had a slight car accident. But I was rescued and received first aid from this lovely ghost from my past. We were just getting to know each other again while I was getting my uh, strength back. Obviously, the medicine worked. Dear Brigitte, <sighs> always ready with the merry quip. Christina, this is Brigitte Reynaud, one of the seven wonders of the film world. French style, of course. And this is Max, who, having married into a gasoline empire, decided to carry on a single-handed battle to keep them in business. And this, my friends, I presume you already know her, is Christina Von Bell, the so-called playgirl of the Western world. Listen, I'm starving. Let's get dressed for dinner, huh? That's a very good idea. Would you rather have a drink first? No, I'd rather have a nice warm bath. Uh See you later. Best part of the movie coming up. Yep. Uh, anyway, the we see a, uh, somebody in a mask comes riding up to shore, and they tie the boat to a ladder. Uh, she is shown her room, and uh, she decides to get ready for the shower, so she gets naked. Bath. Warm bath. Warm bath. But she ends up, it's a shower, because she walks into a standing she shower. She said bath, though. Yeah, she said bath, but it's a fucking shower. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to talk about this, like, full body nude shot that they do in yeah. this sequence. Mm-hmm. Holy fuck. Thanks, movie. Yeah. I mean, like, they take their time and they make sure that she turns her body one direction and then the other, and, like, they display everything for you. I saw everything. I mean, it's nuts, like, it's, how long they focus in yeah. on this. Yeah, you'd see a lot of good shit in there. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those things where yeah, I was... the full 360. I was trying to do some research on my phone, and then I looked up and noticed that, and Ooh. then I rewound it, yeah. and then watched it, and then rewound it again, and then yeah, watched, watched it. it. 
And then I'm like, Jesus, I'm going to be watching this one scene for the entirety of the length of the hour and a half of the you movie. You don't know what happened after the scene, do you? I mean, I do. No, I bet you don't. No, I know I, I do. <laughs> oh, but, okay. Like, all I can remember is this, this scene. scene. <laughs> I feel like this is the sort of thing where if you were at the right age and you are attracted to women and you happen to catch this on late night Playboy channel that it was on or late night cable, if it ever aired on late night cable afterwards, which I doubt, if you got your hands on it and you happen to see it at the right age, this would affect make you attracted to a very specific type of woman, and that would be Jules Shepard. Yes. Like, you would be all about Jules Shepard for the rest of your life. Yeah. (laughs) I agree. Uh, And as she is getting into the shower, the person in black attacks. Uh, She kind of fights them off, and the others come to help. Okay, okay. Full nude bad kung fu. Yeah. Full nude bad kung fu. Nothing else in this movie matters. I love it from this alone. (laughs) She has has the worst fucking fight scene. I the worst fucking uh, fight scenes in this entire movie, but it's done mostly topless and or nude do, for do, naked ladies, and I fucking loved it. Do you all wish like she would have done the crane nude, like from the fucking Karate Kid? Uh, no, the I was hoping nude. for I was hoping for a spinning back kick into camera. If you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> um, as they demask the person, we see it's a woman. Uh, she questions her, and that is our next clip. Wait, you guys don't know how to be polite. You have to ask nicely. Now, my friend, I'm sorry we weren't formally introduced, but let's cut the shit, shall we? I don't want you to think I'm after revenge. After all, we wouldn't want to hurt the pretty little things now, would we? I'm Emily. I'm with the 10th of November group. I'll talk if you let me go. I don't want to die or anything else. You amaze me. John, tire up, will you? Then on the rest of the staff, post a guard and notify the police. I'll contact the company and arrange for a proper security. This lady came solo, and her game is up. Take her downstairs and lock her up, John. How about dinner? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's go, then. Yeah. Okay, what the fuck? Hey, man, one of our own just almost got kidnapped and who knows what else, but let's eat some fucking dinner instead of calling the cops right the fuck now. Yeah, and the guy's like, take her downstairs and lock her up like he's got his own fucking prison. What's he going to do with this woman? And well, like, I don't know, man, but... The, do I mean, we ever know why they're called the 10th of November? No. Remember, there, remember it, the 10th of November? Is, is there something... The lesbian kidnapping plot? Is there something significant about the 10th of November for women? Somebody out there in the UK or someone who's a fan yeah. for V for Vendetta got my joke that you were stopping all over and laughed at it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, somebody out there. <laughs> so if, if you're out there, I guess holler at you, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we also get to see this girl's boobs because, you know, they unrobe her with a knife. So Jewel Shepard's character, Christina yeah. does it. She, yeah. she zips down her jacket very forcibly. She pretends like she's going to cut off her nipple. She, she didn't threatens talk. to stab her straight into the tit and cut off the whole tit is what yeah. I was getting. Yeah. Cause I mean, while it wasn't like enough of a boob to really see, I did make sure that I took a good look to understand what was going on with a knife. You see enough nipple. And the way she's holding the knife is not just threatening the nipple. It's the whole of the tit. Oh, Jesus. So oh. she was going to mastectomy her ah. if she didn't talk. Yeah. Um. Well, the girl was able to get away from the butler and... Uh, with she... the judicious use of an elbow backwards that no one could have foreseen coming without tying her up first. Yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, no one cares and we cut to dinner. And... She jumps off the fucking cliff and does this like lazy dive yeah. into the ocean and they all just assume she dies? No, I think they assume she got away, but they don't care. They're all together. Right. So they try to kidnap one of you. Because they legit see her swim away. They, 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 she tries to kidnap one of you. Yeah. She gets away. Yeah. And then they continue to do this other stuff that makes absolutely no sense afterwards. Why not leave this? It's obviously not secure enough. Why not leave this villa or whatever and go somewhere else? Because they're horny. I get that. But like you can be horny on the road to go somewhere else to but fuck you understand. Too. They're horny. Horny. No, Matt, I believe it's what's called bad writing. Oh, well, that too. <laughs> but also, horny only but goes also so horny. far. No, no. Horny can go pretty far. I, I think you're really underestimating what horny can do to a person. Believe me, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just saying. It'll make you do some stupid shit. Yeah, like one day you wake up with a wife and three kids and you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Uh, no, I don't have the three kids, so I'm okay. That you know of. Yeah. <laughs> 
hey, I don't need to know about the other ones. Um, anyway, at dinner, they talk about how the two men are kind of investing money, and it, it doesn't really matter. Um, it never yeah, comes all back. Of, all of the dialogue is just basically I, a dick measuring I contest in this scene. I wrote down what they're investing money in, and then when it never panned out the rest of the movie, I scribbled it all out, and I'm not even going to talk about it because it doesn't fucking matter. So now I'm curious. What were they talking about? They were investing? talking about automation in driving and in other machinery. They are talking about something that's actually kind of a big deal nowadays. Yeah, automatic driving. Automatic driving. Right. Uh, and not just driving. Automation of a lot of things. Yeah. Shipping. All this kind of stuff and how it could change the world. And yeah. they're trying to invest and get enough money, but it's kind of hard to get in with the Japanese technology. Which is actually all correct because yeah. at this time that this movie was made, the Japanese were experimenting very heavily with cameras and um, automated self-driving vehicles and things like that. Yeah. So it's really fascinating that so they I, threw that in there. And I was like, okay, for them to, in like you just said, yeah. wow, that's uh, that's very correct stuff. Yeah, that's and very, very specific. You're very specific. I'm like, this has got it for it to be this well researched and put in and spoken about this much. This well researched. The writer slash director or whoever yeah. else saw one magazine article, told the guys what to say about it. Way more. I mean, that's more than the rest of this movie's done. No, 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 Matt. <laughs> they did a whole lot of heavy research into lesbian terrorists. Oh, uh, well, okay. But anyway, uh, by I the way, thought, it's a thing. It is a thing that I agree. Thank, <laughs> thanks, David. Um, <laughs> Such a ridiculous <laughs> plot line. I know. But I mean, you think it's going to come back? And I, you take to me a spoiler for you. None of this ever comes or brought up again. Yeah, we don't have any automated boats. She doesn't end up investing in anything automated no, at the end of the there's film. There's nothing about automation ever again. There's some autoerotic asphyxiation. Well, yeah, but you know that's not the same thing. No, that was just me watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway as they sit at dinner um uh christina starts playing footsie or not really footsie she puts her foot up into patrick's groin this was actually funny and then he gets a look because the other girl's putting her foot into his groin so uh, he, no 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 he puts his foot up into the girl across the yeah, way's groin. groin and then she puts her foot into the other dude's groin and he puts his foot into christina's groin yep. and then you look at her at the table and no one's feet are on the ground anymore everyone's foot is up at everybody up else's at, groin. Yeah, groin yeah 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 everyone's got a foot in the groin but nobody took their shoes off so there's no. like shoes being rubbed into a groin which takes away the point of i mean that, the whole foot to the groin a thing. lot of those groins have 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 athletes foot now um and a bunch of other things that were on the soles of the shoe rubbed yeah. up against them i mean holy shit it's spain it's <laughs> <laughs> no it's not just spain oh sorry europe <laughs> anyway I... <laughs> yeah disparage an entire continent don't <laughs> yeah. just call out where the film you're, you're right and it wasn't shot just in spain it oh. was shot all over europe so okay so there you yeah go. it's europe it's yeah we understand it's gross <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Go America. Anyway. I would like to apologize to the two Europeans that listen to the show. I mean, just play it because we are. I mean, it's, I mean. I can't just do a call out for you. America is a bunch of cunts. There. Yeah, we are. America is a bunch of cunts. Happy. There you go. Uh, so anyway, um, they uh, then decide it's time for a little strip tease. And Christina, the other girl, start stripping down a little bit. Uh, the men join and uh, they're all having fun. And then they decide to go to the sauna. They're in the sauna. Anna, and uh, everyone starts to make it out and the two girls said it's too hot in here and they leave and the two guys are just kind of sitting in there I'm like well okay is this movie gonna get a little weird or what are we doing man <laughs> let's see how close these two are as friends and uh <laughs> it, was, it was really weird because he's like Christina's beau guy that she's supposed to be with in this situation the dude from pod people and yeah, uh pieces Patrick. right he's sitting on like the top shelf thing of the he's, sauna he's on the top tier yeah and she's laying across that into his crotch, yeah. which I would submit to you is not a good place to be rubbing your hair whenever you're in a sweaty, sweaty place. Yeah, right. You know, because you're going to just basically imbue your hair with the stench of his crotch sweat <laughs> when you do that, lady. Just saying. I, don't I mean, you're not wrong. They didn't plan this out. No, they didn't. They were thinking. And then the other guy is on the lower side to the opposite end of the sauna. Yes. Like as far against the wall as he they're can get. Because they're not a, gay. Because that's yeah. how you do that. Yeah, they wanted to get as far away from each other as they possibly could. It's like when you see. Wise. It's like when you see two dudes go to a movie to watch a movie, they leave the middle seat open because they're not gay. I, that, that's, 
that's such a stupid thing. I, 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 <laughs> I know guys do that. But I know. I'm just saying, I'm making the joke. That that's it's all toxic stupid. masculinity yeah, is what yeah, that is. Yeah. But they're on the opposite tiers and on the opposite sides of the wall as they could possibly get. But they're both nude as fuck. Yeah. And then the other girl ends up after Christina lays down into the crotch and gets the crotch sweat all over her hair. She decides she has to get the other guy's crotch sweat she, in her hair. They're like, we need to have the scent of that dude on us, apparently, is what yeah, they're all about. So they know not to fucking, you know, they don't lose control in the mix and match here. I don't know, but... But no, that all that is fine. But the two girls leave, yeah. and then those two guys are just sitting in there, staring at one another, naked. They're not really staring at each other, they're just kind of like, well, what do we do now? <laughs> I, w- I, would, I would think that answer's pretty fucking obvious. You get up and follow where the naked chicks went. Yeah, but they're in Europe, Matt, so that answer is not so obvious. That is not so obvious. You are right. Like I said, I like, mm, are we going to get a different kind of movie over here? <laughs> I mean, like, if the two guys were to kind of move towards each other and then they whatever, but then the movie moves off and you see the two girls together and then yeah. the guys come out and, you yeah. know. Everyone have fun. Yeah, everybody. I mean, just get in a circle and get down. Everybody's fucking everybody, pretty much. <laughs> like, that's fine. Go for it. But Let, let it go, man. But they, Power to the people. They stay on that long enough to make it to where, like, I guess you're supposed to question if that's going to happen or not and then they just decide whatever and then stop. Or, or they, I don't think we're supposed to question it. I think they're like, well, we need to fill some time, so we're just gonna it's leave it be, here in the sauna in a little bit. Gotta be 90 minutes, let's leave it on the naked dudes for the ladies that watch the Playboy yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Um, let's leave it on for the ladies whose husbands are forcing them to do this to quote-unquote spice up their marriage. Uh, after they get out of the sauna, then they're all banging on the couches. Um, after they uh, finish and everyone's kind of laying around, uh, the other girl comes up and starts uh, going after uh, Christina, and they start, uh, you know, she starts sucking her titty. So, I mean, thanks, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. And they're they're having, I don't know if you would call it group sex, but they're like in the same room so they can watch each they're, other while yeah, they're Yeah, they're in it. the same room. And then after like they all kind of finish individually and the two As girls couples. start making out. Well, because Christina's laying on top of Patrick, so he's not going anywhere. Patrick has the other dude bring him a drink and then they're all on the same couch watching the two girls go at it. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they've are they they've got their own dynamic, man, but more power to them. Well, both of the men left the ladies significantly unfulfilled by the time they finished. I'm I'm sure they did. As men are wont to do. Yes, as men as men do. <laughs> I mean, I try not to. But I mean, we all try not to. Well, most of us try not to. Most of us give a fuck to try yes, not to. Yes, I mean, I try not to. <laughs> That's too high. What? Yeah, as do you, as yeah. do I, as do... I bet most of our male listeners try not to. Yeah, but these two ladies clearly have been left unsatisfied yes. and left alone to their own devices are going to pleasure each other, possibly enticing both coke-dicked men into trying again. I don't know. Like, I just got the inclination that these two dudes weren't doing their job. They were just getting their own jollies off. I get that at a whole lot of movies, though. Like, softcore porn. It always looks like it's just the dude who gets off. Well, yeah, that's usually how it works. Yeah. Like, men being able to be in charge and getting what they want and then women left on fulfilled yeah that seems to be like some dude fantasy thing. that's fucking weird man that's in all of these soft cores that we've watched so I, far i'm not disagreeing with yeah. you yeah yeah because if they show any women actually enjoying sex then it gets an x rating and they have to cut that stuff out i'm telling you right now everything's fucked <laughs> yeah it doesn't get better for a while no uh all right the next morning uh as patrick is asleep she is up and writes him a little note and then steps out of the place um she's having some coffee and she wants to go horse riding the butt states that he should follow her for protection like what protection can he fucking offer you know <laughs> yeah she did most of the kung fu work that captured the lady that tried to take her earlier and he missed an elbow to his fucking stomach holding somebody in such a way that would make an elbow to the stomach easiest move of all time so but she kind of is mad about it but he says he'll stay behind and she'll essentially be alone so she relents and she says okay as uh, she is riding the horse on the beach she looks up and sees the butler with two people on dirt bikes because it's the 80s, so we have to have dirt bikes. Um, and he sends them after her. So the butler's in on it. Yep. Which is why the girl got away in the first place. Exactly. Uh, after a chase, uh, which is actually not half bad. Is this the one where she gets on the horse and yeah. tries to run away for a little while? Yeah. Yeah, because the horse riding is actually pretty the good. The horse riding, and the dirt, whoever's riding the dirt bikes in the sand is kind of doing all right. Yeah, this was this sequence was probably the best of the action. Yeah, of the, the action film. chase sequences, this is the, the better of the, the all of them. Um, but she is grabbed, and as she is grabbed, she kinda, and people kinda get a hold of her, she kinda has an existential crisis and goes into a white, smoky dreamland. And that is our next clip. 
I always dream in black and white. I find it so becoming. The trouble with this particular dream was that it started turning into a nightmare. Hands that, that wouldn't leave me alone. Hands without people, without faces. A mystery without a solution. When I finally came to my senses, I found myself in a difficult situation. It was all tied up, a condition I strongly dislike. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, this so, is this is where the problematic stuff in the film actually starts for yeah, me. Yeah, and it's not quite there yet. But what she's stating essentially is that she's feeling all these hands, or just two pair of hands, grabbing her at this point. Yeah, but she has this thing where she has a fight or flight reflex, where she blacks out and then has sex dreams. Yeah, kind of. But at the same time, she's being like when she's being grabbed or assaulted in some way, shape, or form, she blacks out and then finds a way to enjoy the sexual aspect See, yeah, of it. Yeah, this and is what I'm kind of getting. This is where they start and like when they first did that when they kidnapped her and she's like, I dream in black and white and I yeah. feel like, and they try to make this erotic where she's being kidnapped and yeah. violently so and it's like, whoa, what the fuck are you doing, movie? Well, and even worse so she wakes up, she is tied up and she's only in her panties in a white shirt that is pushed all the way up so her tits are out. Okay, that was the shirt that she went riding with. Yeah, and it's like a, a long it's shirt. Like, uh, like, girls in the 80s wore this a lot went down to the knees and a lot of girls that's all they wore yeah it was a t-shirt dress yeah, yeah but hers goes barely below her ass yeah in this yeah. yes but uh, it's all the way pushed up so her boobs are exposed uh she's able to get free and starts looking for a way out as she's looking around she keeps hearing her name being called and then as uh, she is chased again by more people in black leather and she is caught and that leads to our next clip jesus Christ. everything went black again and white. These same hands were attacking me, but more, many more. In a very intimate way, I was aroused. However hard I fought, they wouldn't leave me alone. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't make up my mind. Was I terrified or ecstatic? My mind was already being made up for me, though I didn't realize it. The boss of the gang into whose hands I had fallen had arrived to collect me. Her name was Rosa, and next to her, Frankenstein looked like a friend. What's going on here? It's like walking into a brothel. Now, let's not get upset. We don't want any misunderstanding. Shut up. The fact that you helped us get Christina doesn't allow you to speak if not spoken to. So just shut up. What about the blonde girl, the American? What do we do with her? She is not just a blonde girl. This wine is shit. She is a treasure. She is a gold mine. Let me just tell you, her stupid father, I mean Mr. Van Bell, he is going to pay a lot. And I mean a lot for Christina. So go and get her. Make it snappy. I cannot stand this violence around here. It's just too much for me. What would we do without you, John? And what would you do without us? Thank you, Madam Rosa. As you know, I am always at your disposal. Very good. Are they coming? Go easy on her, girls. <laughs> All right, Christina, be a nice girl. Be quiet. I'm sorry, Miss Van Bell, but please, behave yourself. Don't make it more difficult than it is. John, where am I? They're hurting me. I am terribly sorry, Miss Van Bell, but you are quite kidnapped, actually. Kidnapped? How vulgar. Our delicious heiress, the darling of her magazine readers. A member of the Jet Set, who stays in the best hotels in the whole world. She will be our guest, our first class guest. The 10th of November group, to which we all belong, is going to put a nice prize on her, a very nice prize, for our precious little Christine. We are modernizing our business, and you've got no idea, Miss Van Bell, how expensive everything is now. Uh, for instance, 
You know how much it costs to bring you to these islands? It's here! Okay, the helicopter's arriving. Let's go, everybody. It's time now. Let's go. All right. So she's a kidnap victim who is really extremely susceptible to Stockholm Syndrome. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, well, this is a women's liberation group. They arrive to their headquarters, and Boss Lady says that two women will fight for the right to guard Christina that night. Oh, yeah. It's not guarding. No, I know. I'm just using the word she used. It's, it's yeah. to have the ability to, to rape her. Essentially. But yeah. they call them a bodyguard, and by yes. bodyguard, they mean violate her body and make sure she can't leave. Yes. Uh, well, two Somehow girls, a clip. Yeah, two, two of the women fight, and of course, uh, as they fight, their tops come off and titties come flopping out. Like, almost instantly. Yeah. Like, their opening move of the attack is expose the boobs. Yeah, I mean, it's like, ha-ha! <laughs> I mean, like, I wish all girl fights went that direction. Right? Just, just, why, just, they should have just ripped off their own tops and went at it. Yeah, like, like, a, like, like the, screaming like a bunch of, like, mad banshees, like, just, like, like Hulk Hogan style, rip the top yeah, right yeah. open. Like, uh, rip the top off like a fucking meth head in a goddamn trailer park getting ready to fight. Just t- take that top off. <laughs> Scream something about it being on, like, Donkey Kong. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, oh, my Donkey Kong, go at it. Um, anyway, as, the end of it we find out that one of the women named mary she wins the fight uh how do we know that mary wins the fight uh she she knocked out the other girl and then the the boss lady says mary you won (laughs) okay well you need to talk about the choreography and the fights here do we really have to (laughs) it's kind of depressing it's so bad way bad i don't think they even told the girls what they had to do i think the ladies that are in this film were throwing kicks and punches like trying to work it out yeah it looked like call College level stage play practice during class to try and do a fight scene. If Karate Kid had wax on, wax off, this movie has shuffle to the left. Now just shuffle to the right. Now just yeah. do a low kick. Yeah, most of the fighting is basically them like hunched down doing the Super Bowl shuffle in a circle at each other. Yeah. Throwing the occasional like claw maneuver or a slap or a backhand. Yeah. A wheel kick and then like trying to do like a roundhouse kick that's horrible. Listen, I'm looking for the big boot, the leg drop, the three count, and then for them to pose with their shirts off. That's all I'm looking for here. This is really bad fighting. Is, and they should have gotten a belt. I What's, mean, What makes this significantly bad is you do not have one of them completely nude while fighting. Yeah. At least when Jules Shepard was throwing the kicks earlier when she was naked in the bathroom. You're like, hey, look at that. They were giving us something to actually yeah. see there and really look for at least that these kick. Two, these two women were topless, though, so. Right, but like the choreography is so bad and the outfits are so atrocious that Oof. it is taking away but, all sexual enjoyment of them being topless. Let me tell you, all these uh, women are wearing that they have the same get the uniform. It is a leopard print sleeveless top with leather pants. It looks exactly like the outfit of all of Show Enough's guys that hung out with him. It's exactly the same outfit. Yeah, yeah. It's like a kimono type top or like martial arts key type yeah. top, but like see-through-ish yes, it's, that the it's, ladies it's, it's are all like, wearing it's and very then leather thin. pants. That's all their outfits are. Yeah. Um. Anyway, after the fight, we see Christina in the bath. Uh, Mary kind of rubs her down and then starts drying her off. Christina's in a bath. She gets up, is covered in suds. They slowly drift down her Mm -hmm. body as she stands there and turns around once again, displaying all of her body in all directions. Yes. This filmmaker knows what's keeping our attention. No, yeah, he He, knows where the moneymaker is. Yeah, yeah, this is not, this is not a stupid way of making this particular scene. They're like, hey, look, sorry about the uh, padding that we're doing between Jewel Shepard's nude scenes. Here she is getting out of a bubble bath as you watch the bubbles slowly drift down off of her body. And then Mary slowly dries her down. After she specifically says please don't, Yes, she goes ahead and she doesn't just dry her down. She basically uses the towel as an excuse to rub her entire body with her hands. Yes. Like in a really perverted way that made me jealous it wasn't my hands. (laughs) They head to the bed. (laughs) And even though Christina says no again and that she's scared, Mary says that after this she won't want another man again. Well that's true yeah that's it, absolutely true and then we get lesbian sex i guess thank you movie but like yeah, it's it, it starts off as not consensual but she, like she says no yeah and then the girl says that to her yeah christina's mood shifts and she hops up on the bed herself and just kind of like lays out and is just like they're, let's let's do this they're going with the ideal that 57 no's and one yes is a yes 
Well, I mean, in the time frame this movie was set in, that's technically considered okay by society. Yeah. It's fucking wrong. It's way wrong. We all knew that that was wrong. And even to this day, because it's two women doing it, people are like, we'll let that go. Do you really think some so? Will, some will, yeah. Yeah, there's there's <sighs> enough assholes out there that, yeah, she, because it's two women. Yeah, my thought is it's consent because, like, Christina's basically a party girl anyway, and she is like, let's, okay, I'll give it a shot. Like, you kind of see that come across her face when she hops back on the bed yeah by the time she lays back but like up until that point she's scared and she's uncomfortable and like they needed to have a passage of time before they did this they're just condensing it all down just to have another sex scene yes and at this point the problem i have she again goes into her white dream world uh with all the smoke and everything and this time toy cars are going all over her body as she talks about how she loves fast cars and how they make her feel sexy and all that so again it's like she's closing off having to think about things that she enjoys to get through this, which again makes you feel way dirty watching this. It's really a bizarre set of sequences when they do this where she goes out of her body and she goes to like her happy place where various leather gloved hands are driving toy cars all over her naked body. Yeah. And like I want to be uncomfortable about this but like there's plenty of shots where you see all the way up to Heaven's Gate in here. Uh huh. And like all my brain is going I saw everything. The entire time and like I'm I'm watching this and I'm like no this is bad. This This, woman this this woman has gone to a happy place to avoid avoid the horrible things that are happening to her. Yeah. But that lizard brain is still going, but I saw everything. And I'm like, yeah, but you're not supposed to like this. Stop it. Yeah. And then the movie is making me feel uncomfortable and just not really digging what's happening. But at the same time, I'm still, I saw everything. And like the rest of the sequences we're about to talk, this is the same for each and every one of them where they cut away to do the same thing. Exactly. Well, anyway, we cut to, she's walking with Mary now dressed just like her in the uniform. They're talking, Stockholm Syndrome. Yes, they're talking She's about... She's a part of the Liberation Front. They're talking about dreams. Mary, uh, it sounds like Christina will be transferred somewhere. Mary's not allowed to go with her. Uh, and they're talking about dreams, and Christina talks about her dream to be able to get out of there and leave and escape. Antoinette, the girl who Mary defeated, uh, is listening there. And they show up, and there's another fight. Uh, but this time, Boss Lady shows up and wants to know, what's the, wants to know the deets about what's going on. Um, <laughs> so Antoinette is basically... It, pissed off that Mary won the fight and got to rape the fuck out of out of Christine's Christina. character. And now Antoinette is doing this backbiting underhanded shit that she's about to pull yeah. just so she can do the exact same thing. Well, Antoinette does throw Mary under the bus, so the boss lady gives Christina to Antoinette. But Maria or Mary doesn't even actually say she was going to help her escape, just that nope. she had to go. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So Antoinette is fucking lying just so well, she can and get a crack It's actually Christina. that Christina gets to leave, and Mary was t- talking about how she always has to stay there. Yeah. And she's like, well, you're just a prisoner like I am. Yeah. I mean, Mary was trying to make some connection or uh, Christina was trying to make some connection to Mary. Yeah, so more Mary than just will sexual. Stop, yeah. Mary was well, so Mary will stop seeing her as a sex object and as yeah. a human being and possibly not jam her whole elbow up in there. Well, yeah. <laughs> so Antoinette that night walks in and this is one of those times. See, and that scene was one of the few scenes where uh Christina, the character, was actually fully clothed. Now she's in some red lingerie with her boobs out again. And Antoinette brings her to the boss you lady. You sound upset about that. I am not. Okay. I'm just speaking matter of Factly. Yeah. Kind of like a newsman, I have to try to sometimes put my emotion out of it. I feel bad for what Jewel Shepard endured for this film to be made. Yes. I absolutely do. Uh huh. Having said that, I enjoy every frame of nudity that features her in this film. Yeah. I just think she never got nude once in Return of the Living Dead. She <laughs> left that all up to somebody else. Uh, that was Linnea Quigley's contract that yeah. she was the only woman that was allowed to be naked in that film. <laughs> Is that real? <laughs> no. Okay. Like, you know, Hollywood, you, you would be surprised about some things. Let me put it this way. When you have Linnea quickly getting naked, you, just, you don't really need much else. You don't need much else. All right. I got you. Anyway, uh, Antoinette uh, brings her to the boss lady, and that is our next clip. Of course. Christina, my dear, you know you didn't have to behave the way you did today. Trying to convince a little naive thing like Mary to help you escape. It was silly, wasn't it? You really think I'd ever want to leave this wonderful place? My, you are feisty little thing. Still on the defense. Seems that the ransom negotiations aren't going very well. You might be with us for a very long time. So, are you going to rape me now? Or later? Now, Christina, why wait? Let me tell you how you can even enjoy your stay with us. There are certain special privileges. 
which are available for a select few. And who selects the select? I do. In return for certain agreements, of course. Mm, of course. Don't be silly. You really mustn't, you know. Privileges, Christina. Oh. Everything at Chateau Rosa must be earned. But anything one desires is available. Oh, well. In that case, I guess I'll have champagne and caviar and a Learjet out of here. We are not interested in material things now. Just in you. Did she just basically say that she's going to make Christina like the cult sex slave here? Pretty much. All right. There's another message that's going on with this film that we also need to address. Yeah. This is perpetuating the myth of the predatory lesbian. Yes. The idea that they are seeking out and trying to take advantage of the innocent and the naive. Yeah. And this actually amplifies it to the point where they're an entire like terrorist organization mm -hmm. that goes from trying to change things to specifically just kidnapping her and turning her into a sex slave. And it's also the scary l women's liberation movement, you know, that myth. <laughs> that it's, it's you know, it's supposed to be... Uh, women's uh, liberation is Supposedly... No, I know, but th that it's evil, that myth. Well, yeah, the, the two the go myth hand The myth that hand. it's evil. Yeah. And anything uh, that tries to smash the status quo that is the patriarchy. And, so, and yeah. so they're the terrorists and they're this and they're that and they're predatory and all that, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all that horse shit that is probably yeah. still a lot of people believe to this day. No, if the film was being written by someone who was attempting to do this in such a way as to be sardonic and sarcastic and play it up for, you know, like a comedic effect. Yeah. You know, like like what Lloyd Kaufman would do with this type of material yeah. or another writer who's not necessarily a good writer, but is attempting to lampoon and just point out what's wrong with these type of preconceived notions uh -huh. and these types of um, not necessarily myths, but like prejudices and things like that. It would be more depthly handled and it would feel a lot better. This yeah. just literally feels like some dude that's like, hey, am I right? Yeah. yeah the yeah. entire time while you're watching it, it's nudge, like, nudge, oh. that's how they all are, right? Yeah. And it's like, holy fuck movie. It's what fucking are you doing? Bad. Yeah. But then again, Jill Shepard's naked, like constantly. So, like, I, all my arguments are invalid because <laughs> I'm watching it for that reason. So, yeah. I'm a part of the problem here. You are part of the problem. You're yeah. terrible. I'm. I close my eyes during the nudity parts because I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm never a mind. lying sack of shit. <laughs> I'm a friend of women everywhere. Close my eyes. <laughs> Dude, I don't I deserve turned, to I, see. I put my fingers up to yeah. edit out the nudity <laughs> I did, personally, I did, so I didn't see it. You make your own black bars. Yeah. Um, she is handcuffed down onto a table and stripped so she's nude, and Antoinette starts going after her. And when that happens, she again goes to smoky dreamland, where now it's not cars, but semis and tanks being ran all over her body. But they're still toys. They're not real tanks and semis. Yeah. Coincidentally, I would find that extremely erotic if she actually were being ran over by tanks and <laughs> Trucks. That would be really sexy. You're fucked up, man. I did not deny that. <laughs> and she says now she has no control over what happens. Well, um, okay, the sequence where she is chained up and about to be having something sexual done to her. Yeah. Like, if you're going to imply it and then you're going to cut to this weird sex fantasy dream, like, why are you doing that? Is it because Jewel Shepard did not agree to do any actual sexual it posing? Could, it could be so they didn't get nailed with the uh, worst rating. Possibly, but like... Yeah. The driving the trucks over her body, like for the eroticism, like the camera's still going as much into her crotch as possible for all yeah. of these shots. And in this sequence but where they're driving the tanks and the it's just her. The tanks and the trucks, they are spending way more time filming right up on yeah. the vagina. But maybe it's because it's just her and it's not showing another woman with her. Maybe that because for the times, yeah, but you know, in, that could be Europe a problem or, with that. Yeah, the, but even in the Playboy channel, they still would have done it. I don't know. I think it was like a choice to try and make it more artistic. But maybe make it go artsy with it. Yeah, but it's just bad just a, they, they, it's a swing and a miss right but the whole time i'm watching it while i'm my front brain and the part of me that is logical and yeah. has empathy is thinking all of these thoughts and is uncomfortable about it at the same time every time i get a shot where they pop her crotch up into the yeah. film and i get to see it very very prominently i'm uh -huh. like i saw everything in my reptile brain and i feel guilty the but lizard like, brain man like, it gets you this film had me conflicted the entire time for, like for this. some reason the film didn't get me like that like i was actually more like for some reason and I don't know. I'm not saying she's not attractive, but 
she's just not, you know, she's not fully my type. Mm. I mean, she's hot. I'm mm-hmm. not saying she's not. I'm just mm-hmm. saying. So maybe she's because she's. It seems like you've got a, a pretty heavy thing for her. I do after this movie. Oh, okay. This movie is what helped me develop it. All right. So like for some reason I just didn't. I just didn't get that. I don't know why. Mm. Maybe it's because I was doing notes and shit. Or is it racism? I don't see race. Or so you know. I guess <laughs> that's it's your baggage to handle. I just. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. Maybe it's racism that I found her so attractive. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Man, that could get turned around real quick, can't it? I have I really I have no clue what it was. But yeah, I but it, like the the sequence where she's getting ready to take a shower is when I became extremely infatuated with yeah. her. And then the rest of the stuff where the movie's proceeding to abuse her like yeah. this, it made me really conflicted and uncomfortable because at the same time I'm like, you know, you you develop that like infatuation with her for the first first time you see her like nude and, also and then me, after that it's like uncomfortable nudity and like sexual stuff that is not yeah. cool to and get. i want to be uncomfortable by all this kind of abuse but it's so poorly done that it's almost laughable to the point where i it, it's like see, i can't intention- even feel horrified by it because it's so poorly done well just because it's not done well and it's not executed in such a way the doesn't, message part of it yeah the attention of it is what is making me uncomfortable there you go i whereas, get that whereas the execution i don't really find all that offensive or anything like that it's the intention behind it that bugs me and again like every time i'm having that conflict they do another shot of her body in such a way that i notice it and my brain automatically goes back to oh. yeah <laughs> well anyway uh now they cut to she is having an inner monologue how she now they she's walking with internet she's with internet now she has a love-hate relationship with her and as they are walking they make out and then she punches internet in the stomach and runs but then is caught and then they start making out some more uh we cut to it's a beach day and internet with says she'll miss her when she's gone. Uh, we see a boat is starting to come in, so Christina swims out to it, and, and Antoinette swims after. Uh, some guys pick her up, put her in the boat, and Antoinette climbs on and starts beating the living shit off them all until uh, Christina uh, actually helps toss her all off the boat. Okay, again, the fight sequences are so poorly executed. That was like the shits right there. We have straight wheel kicks, and it's clear that every single man on that boat is afraid to do anything anything physical in the direction of this woman. Yeah. I respect them for that, but at the same time, they are telegraphing everything that because they're Because they have a lack do. of training in this. I yeah. mean, no, these like, are probably stuntmen none at of, all. None of them took a swing at her. Only Jules Shepard actually did, and even her stuff was like really short distances where she's like maybe like two to three feet away from any punch connecting. There, there was no budget for uh, stunt direction or choreography. You know? Yeah, but like you could still take a little bit of time to sort of work out what you're going to do and make it look at least somewhat okay. I, I don't think they cared that much. No, they very clearly didn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part that really, really bugs me. And to the point where, like, they're even all working together to throw the woman off the boat. Yeah. And they do that so badly. I felt bad for the actress. It looked like she hit the side of the boat and probably got hurt. Yeah, probably. Um, so anyway, uh, as they retain her, they tell her that they are actually smugglers and they're also after a ransom. Uh, but she will not be hurt. And, you know, they're not planning on hurting her or anything. They're just going to hold her. They're not just smugglers. They're all like chefs, too, or yeah, some shit. Yeah, like, chefs. F- smugglers. Chefs slash smugglers. Like they yeah. smuggle their own food produce and yeah. stuff to save money for their Probably, restaurants. Or, I, or meat and everything, yeah. I don't I don't understand where this is coming from. All I know is that Jules Shepard at this point, her character Christina is on a boat with what, six dudes? Four. Four dudes. Yeah. All right. By herself. Yeah. Out to sea. Yeah. And I'm really scared of where this movie's going to go, considering all the other sexual assaults that we've seen. And we're gonna get very lucky here that it or partially it goes a lot better. Uh because the men <laughs> Do not gang rape her. Uh, we, Thankfully. Yeah, she does go back in Dream World, and at this point, she states that she's humping a sailor. Like, yeah, she's pretty much humping a sailor. And she says, because she hasn't seen a man for so long, she's very excited to be in the company of these men. So, yeah, but in her this Dream is in, World. In her Dream World, she's actually having sex with a man, so this is like her yeah. actual fantasy, yeah. where she's glad to be back with a man because she hasn't been with a man in so long. Yes. Which goes back to the whole predatory lesbianism, and yeah. then, like, all it takes is one good okay. man when she's yeah, been in a relationship. Oh, yeah. yeah. All I'm not other... saying, I almost said something that would have been a fucking other clip. <laughs> well, mine could have been, but thankfully you stepped on it. <laughs> fucking Jesus. <laughs> uh, that night, she has dinner with the boss, Alan, and that is our next clip. To a beautiful evening with a beautiful girl. To freedom. To a beautiful girl's freedom. It's not often that I dine with thieves and smugglers who are such artists in the kitchen. 
We are not all the same, mademoiselle. Christina. Christina. You see, smuggling is really a form of commerce. We simply act according to the laws of supply and demand. And what circumstances justify stealing? Well, you see by these surroundings that I, like you, enjoy the good life. But unlike you, I did not inherit my fortune. I earned it. So, like Robin Hood, I robbed from the rich to help the poor. My father had opposite opinions. Let's cut the crap, shall we? Presumably, you have demanded a ransom from my company. Negotiations have begun. And when, when do I leave? When the negotiations are completed. Oh, make the best of it, Christina. You always did know how to make a good time out of the worst party. You like it? Mm, absolutely superb. You can get a job as a chef after you get out of jail. The wages are too low. The work is too hard. And there are no French benefits. And besides, I would rather eat with you than serve you. Tell me, what else do pirates like? Oh, by the way, the article about me in your magazine doesn't do me justice. Shouldn't we finish eating? All this art and talent will be wasted. I have other talents to show you. You do? Yes. And none of them are printable. And they bounce. Dude finally gets hard, so now it's time to plow. <laughs> That's pretty I mean, much what happens. Yeah, that's what happens. Um, afterwards, they go ashore to a tiny village where Alan says he's just the fucking man. She shouldn't try to escape because everyone's loyal to him up there. And so, fucking, okay. Um, yeah, this is just a bunch of other really uncomfortable shit. So she's a captive. Yeah. He basically wants to plow. And in the dialogue that we even heard in the clip, she's pretty much saying that it's inevitable she should just lie back and enjoy it. She's going to make the best of a bad party. Yeah. She's the best at that she's really good at making the best of a bad party is what no. she says yeah the entirety of this film is telling you that it's always inevitable lay back and enjoy it so this film's a republican senator or congressman <laughs> i mean it very much should be yeah I, like i i don't know how else to describe the way the plot line of this movie is going but it's like she's in a bunch of situations where she has no other choice and this is very coerced sexual contact that she's experiencing she's been kidnapped repeatedly so any sexual contact is automatic Automatically illegal from her captors yeah. on top of everything else because she was fucking kidnapped. She's being yeah. held against her will, you know, and like all she's trying to do is please her captors and the film is trying to sell it as a sexual fantasy that like people should be into. I mean, it's fucking disgusting. No, it's a Republican wet dream. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, um, at night they're all at a cantina and they're drinking and some kid sings a song to her. That was just fucking weird. All I could understand was uh, that he likes Christina. That's, that's all I got because it's... Consider Considering how far it's away he had to hold his guitar while he's singing, yeah, yeah, he really likes her. He just says, me gusta Cristina. So that's the only part I understood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand the Spanish language all the way through, but yeah, I but know that's, that's her name and that I know me gusta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the way he's singing to her is also implied romanticism. Yeah. And I think what he's trying to say in Spanish is these guys don't know what I'm singing, so I'm here to save you. Why don't we escape to the mountains? Maybe. Well, anyway, later on, that kid asks her to dance and he states that he knows her from her magazines and he has a big crush. Uh, Alan jokes that the kid's a virgin. Um, as the two dance, they talk and that is our final clip. Don't buy them. They're just a little drunk. And they forget how difficult it is to be young. And you've lived here all your life? My parents are shepherds. Uh, they live in the mountains. And do you want to be a shepherd? Oh, no. I'm going to Madrid to be a famous singer. <laughs> you seem awfully sure about that. Absolutely. If you make up your mind about something, and you feel strongly enough, then it will happen. Oh, I hope you're right. So far, it hasn't worked out for me. I'm still a prisoner. Do you want to escape from those people? Oh, you can say that again. You think you can help me? Okay, so the only reason he wants to save her is the promise that she's going to take his virginity so that he has something to brag about how he severely disappointed but this woman But you don't know that. Time. You don't know that. I'm pretty sure that's what the film's implying here. Maybe. I don't think so. He's trying to help. 
Uh, yeah, you're trying to find at least one person in this film that isn't getting greasy on her. And you want to try to find people in this film who are only greasy. That's because everyone in this film is greasy. We will see here in a little bit that this kid isn't greasy. Hmm, sure. All right, well, it's in- not inferred he's not greasy. Anyway, uh, he sends a woman to go sit with one of Alan's men, which causes one of the bigger, drunker guys to get pissed. And, it- and by the way, the woman who he sent to go sit with her, she's pretty much topless, too. But she has something covered in her boobs, but it's it's like hair or something. It's like, it's it's a weird top. But anyway, uh, there, it causes a pretty good bar fight and a lot of confusion, so they're able to escape. Alan and his crew ask a man where he went, but he said if they're chasing the boy, that boy knows the land better than anyone, and there's going to be no finding him. The Alan and his crew decide that they know they're beheading into the main town on the island, so they're just going to go ahead and guard the road there. Uh, the two hide out in a hut, and after starting a fire and drinking some wine, um, Christina decides that it's time to bone him, so she does. Yeah. The only reason he saved her is for He doesn't this know hope. that. He doesn't ask for it. She bones him. <laughs> and is severely disappointed at how quickly he finishes before well, she goes anywhere near him. Probably. <laughs> But I mean, he's young. It was he's still got her decision. It's not like he forced himself on her. Uh, he's still a creep. Why is he? A, is it just because any man who's not you with her is a creep? <laughs> well, I mean, that's something I'm going to have to deal with. Sure, <laughs> that's probably a posed opinion that I'm going to have. Yeah. See, I'm just saying. fair enough. But I still feel like the it was heavily inferred that if he saves her, she'll fuck him. No, he just was trying to save her because he had a crush on her. Yeah, but she's also had so much fucking abuse for like ever that now she thinks that anybody who helps her or moves her in any he doesn't know that he hasn't been watching the movie he could probably do what's right and refuse how hot she is and tell her that could you i would try no you (laughs) she's been in a very traumatic situation but if you didn't okay but you only know that because you saw it i knew that she was kidnapped Uh uh-huh he knew that she was kidnapped he knew she needed to but she made the moves even still i Uh would feel a bit uncomfortable about that okay personally so would you be able to stop her? I would hope that I would try. I don't know. I would hope. <laughs> so don't hold your lofty standards up against this kid. And this is coming from an older gentleman <laughs> who's had lots of sex in his life. Don't hold it over whoa, some kid. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what, what? How do you define lots of sex? Come on. <laughs> More than a virgin. Yeah, yeah, okay. More than this fucking kid has. <laughs> just, I would hope so. He's a virgin. He's probably some 16-year-old kid, so oh, she's, so she's this makes already her, doing a statutory rape This makes her him. a statutory rapist, so and therefore it cancels it's, everything out. So now he's the victim. Yes. Yeah, the victim has become the victimizer, as <laughs> is one to happen. Yes. It's still greasy, and it's still wrong, Matt. Because yeah, it's not it's on me her. with her. <laughs> That's what you wanted me to say anyway. Yeah. I'll just fucking yeah. say it. So yeah, we can, I knew it. I so we can hit, knew it. So we can hit the eject button on this goddamn argument. I'm just saying. It's still wrong that it's not me. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so anyway, the next day they find the main road, which was actually right next to the hut they were going in. And they get yeah, a, what a brilliant place to hide. It's yeah. right on the main road. They get a ride from an old man. And uh, as they're driving, they come up on Alan's blockade. And so Christina takes the wheel and drives as fast as she can and blows through it. Did so, it look to you like Jewel Shepard actually did that, that stunt, stunt where she crawls, crawls it across seemed the, like it, yeah. the outside of the truck and into the cab? It didn't look like like a dude in a woman's wig or something no. like that. It looked like Jewel Shepard was actually doing that. Maybe they did it at a slower speed and sped it up. Maybe. But that was still pretty impressive the way she walked around the outside of the truck, yeah. opened the door and climbed in while holding onto the wheel and stuff. Uh-huh. And I like how the one person jumped out of the, through the window of the cab and got to the back of the truck yeah. for her to do that. Yep. Like that was one of the coolest actions this was like that the was, second coolest action yeah. sequence in the film because now we have dirt bikes again and they're all chasing them and the old man and the young man they are throwing stuff at one of the dirt bikers and he wipes out and they run out of stuff to throw at him so then they still keep going through all this here's one thing's funny they're driving through the city and you see what's supposed to be this old woman who's obviously a really tall dude and he leaps away from the car when it like is coming down barreling at him and yeah. like holds to the wall yeah. I just thought that was funny maybe and, it's just a giant old woman Matt. It wasn't. Maybe she suffers from gigantism. She didn't. Maybe it's agrimalia. No, it's not. <laughs> 
Uh, anyway, they drive into a farmer's market. And everyone crashes. Uh, Alan is then arrested on the spot by a cop who sees Christina. Uh, later on, there's a party thrown by Patrick, and she brings Pablo, who's the boy, and they toast to. And then they state it's to, uh, Patrick state it's time to party. They have a great toast, and then Christina takes off her coat, and she is just buck ass naked, and they all begin to dance. Uh, we cut that she is writing a. She already wrote a novel that became a bestseller and she's working on a screenplay for the movie of her life and that she will be back soon. And there's like stacks and stacks of all these books she's written yeah. about her life to this point. Yes. And then we end with a naked Christina working on her typewriter. Roll credits. All right, so maybe it's just me, but I feel as though this movie was an attempt to start a sort of Emanuela. Yes, Emmanuel this is series. supposed to be a new Emanuel series. It's going to be Christina in in Bangkok, Christina in Russia, Christina uh, in down south Georgia with the Duke boys. It was going to be a whole thing. Christina meets a nice gentleman in Omaha. They run off together and have a wonderful life where he's very respectful of her and helps her manage her money, finances, and uh, book writing and is extremely supportive and they have a wonderful life together <laughs> that's, I mean, that's my fan that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's my a fan real pick. long title though I don't know you might have to condense that <laughs> <laughs> Christina meets court style <laughs> <laughs> all right well I'll watch it <laughs> you bet you will how nude are you with this <laughs> enough to make you uncomfortable but not enough to make you into it all right cool 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 all right I'm good I'm good <laughs> so basically from the knees up and yeah. from the the waistline down i'm nude everything else is covered <laughs> so, so from the waist down, to your knees yeah i'm naked you're nude uh -huh. but knees down you have clothes uh -huh. and waist up you have clothes yep i'm into it yeah <laughs> all right let's watch it let's get this movie made let's contact some peeps <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> let's let's shake off all the other shit going on with this movie. Yeah, um, it's uncomfortable from the beginning to the end with all of the sexual situations that they're trying to sell as erotic and um, okay. Yeah, it's rape culture of the movie in a lot of ways. Yes, uh, it's extremely uncomfortable. She's constantly being kidnapped, and the only way that this would make it okay is if they reveal at the end of the giant party that this was all a bored heiress paying off all of these people for this wild sexual crazy adventure. Yeah, like she wanted this to happen and they were going to take her away and she was going to do all this stuff. Yeah. That's the only way that makes this movie okay. Yes. That this is an adventure that she paid for and that she was willing the entire time and that's why she was so sexually aroused and into all of the different things that were happening. Yeah. Because otherwise, that's fucked. Yes. And it makes it very difficult to enjoy the film. Yes. Now having said that, Jewel Shepard is naked the entire time. This is... Your argument's invalid? She's unbelievably beautiful, so I will definitely be watching this film again. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed this film. Yeah. Like even the only other thing, like even maybe not her paying for it. Maybe she is kidnapped, but she's supposed to be this wild sex, you know, because there's times where she says, no, she doesn't want to. And she's scared. Like maybe she does get kidnapped, but she's never scared about it. Like she always has resources to get out, but she's like, fuck it. I'm going to fuck with some of these people anyway, because she wants to. They needed to do something like that to like, show like, that she's okay. got some power in the situation. Yeah. Cause, cause it always seemed powerless. All this, all the sexual situations, yeah. she has no power. In if, it would have been her coming on to all the other women, like not being forced into things. And almost like, and then it's like at the very end, she's like, yeah, I could have escaped any time I wanted to, but I decided to fuck around with all you people because I but wanted to. That ass made me stay. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. If you can add something like that, you'd be yeah. like, all right, you can enjoy this movie yeah. all the way through. Everything's uh, up and up, but otherwise it's, it's real uncomfortable. Yeah. It's a real fucking, and it's a, a rape culture movie. Yeah. It's real uncomfortable for yeah. the bulk of it. And I realized that a lot of this is supposed to be sort of like a female fantasy and maybe this is this Christina character's particular fantasy in a world where she doesn't have to worry about anything. Maybe she likes the feeling of helplessness and powerlessness and all of that kind of stuff and that's part of how she likes to play. But, but at the same time, I needed to see that the other people were in on that to help her fulfill that fantasy. But then you go back to the beginning where she says something, where she says that she wants a man to use her and amuse her and it's just like, yeah. oh. Yeah. It, it, there's so much stuff about this that feels real uncomfortable watching it and it's just... Well, it's a, a misogynistic is all fuck. <laughs> well, yeah, you think? I yeah. mean, they have predatory lesbian stuff yeah, going on I mean, in this film it is for that sake. Horrific. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's absolutely wrong with this film, but again, I still super enjoyed it because I really liked seeing Joel Shepard naked the entire time. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and every single person that's in this film is put together really, really well. There's no ugly, hideous 
fucking chuds like sitting across from me at the table here. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, they're I'm not f- listening to this show. Yeah, people are still listening, and they're no, all highly uh, offended. Are they? Yes. See, I, I didn't say people weren't listening. I said the people would be offended by that aren't listening. Well, they will eventually. Oh. Because then they'll huge, be offended later. They're all huge Joel Shepard fans, and they listen to this show. We'll be and dead they're, long they're long disgusted that. by we'll this. We'll be dead long before that. One would hope. Yeah. Well, while we're still alive, we're going to take a break here. We're going to play a promo for a brand new podcast that's just about to come out. Really? Yeah. And when we come back, we'll have a little bit of music that fits the vibe of Christina, and we'll have some psyop news. <laughs> As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOH Pod at www.gohpod.com as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. you probably would have believed I told you I took right out of the film. Completely. <laughs> the only thing that it missed was the sound of a wet boot being stomped into mud. Only wetter. <laughs> much, much wetter. Much wetter. But it doesn't get much more wetter than <sighs> Sarah News! Comes from our boy uh, Dan Beasel. Yeah, the patriarch of Corrupted Youth Podcast. Mm-hmm. He's the dad in that. Nice. With his son Brennan. Ah, oh, there you go. He's also an artist. Oh. And, and a thumping good one, I'd wager. Awesome. I've actually seen his art. He's really fucking good. That's great. Uh, uh, anyway. Kern, I think, is his comic book, folks. Check that out. Get your hands on it. Well, this one comes from the Kenosha News, so right around my old neck of the woods. Yes, I had to have this discussed because it's right out of where you're from. Yeah. And man- it's got a thing that's close to my heart. Yeah, man squeezed his officer's jet genitals to escape arrest. Old cops are bumbling dummies. A 30-year-old Kenosha man is charged with battery to a law enforcement officer. I'm going to stockpile all my guns because cops don't help you. Resisted officer in disorderly conduct after allegedly squeezing the officer's genitals to avoid arrest after a bar fight Saturday. Old cops are bumbling dummies. <laughs> Jerry D. Watkins the fourth <laughs> is charged with counts of battery to a law enforcement officer, uh-huh. resisting an officer causing a soft tissue injury to an officer, <laughs> and resisting very soft tissue at this point. <laughs> and you can't pay a bill. Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. And a disorderly conduct. All felonies. Drop the humongous ball. With repeater status after allegedly grabbing and squeezing a male officer officer's genitals. Drop the humongous ball. Will be ball. placed in a squad car. It's micro penis time. Okay, first of all, this guy's my fucking hero. <laughs> and he's the fourth too. There's like three other ones who probably been squeezing cops' balls. It's a long line of ball squeezing. <laughs> Clip. Yep. <laughs> I saw that on your face right after I said it. <laughs> Uh, Meanwhile, the cop is all like, it's the erection that counts. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, according to the criminal complaint in the case, Kenosha police officers were called to the factory bar at 5014 7th Avenue for a report of a fight in progress at around 225 a.m. Shut up. Are you talking about penises? When officers arrived, they found a small group of people arguing outside the bar. Officers attempted to speak to the group. However, the group ignored the officer's commands, walking south while yelling and screaming profanities. All blowjobs should be teethy. <laughs> <laughs> I shut you right up in your tracks. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so the guy's got some internal conflicts. Like while he's squeezing the cop's balls to get away, he's thinking yeah. to himself, "Does this make me gay?" Yeah, probably. Meanwhile, yeah. the cops looking around and being like, "I'm taking another dick." <laughs> uh, one of the officers recognized a man in the group and attempted to talk to him, which led to an altercation in which police took the man, later identified as Watkins, to the ground and placed him in handcuffs while Walks, Watkins resisted. After picking up Watkins and placing him inside the squad car, Watkins continued to resist uh, getting into the vehicle. It always comes back to Dick. When an officer moved closer, Watkins, while still handcuffed, grabbed the officer by his crotch and started crushing down on the officer's genitals. I'm taking a Another dick. He Caused screamed a fa- as he squeezed. <laughs> Causing a very sharp and very intense pain, according to the complaint. Come in to me! The officer attempted to break free from Watkins' grip before calling for help from others' officers, with one spray Watkins with pepper stray, which caused Watkins to release his death grip. Your <laughs> silicone penis budget is out of control. Shoot some fucking ropes. The officer sought medical treatment after the incident. At the, his initial appearance in court Monday, Watkins was given a $2,500 cash bond. Watkins will next appear in court for preliminary hearing on March 17th. Note to self save up $2,500 for physically assaulting officer. Well, it doesn't mean you're going to get that same thing. I'm going to Genosha for this. You're going to go up to Kenosha? Yeah, I'm going up to Kenosha. They're, they're all this. wearing cups now. They're going to be ready for you. <laughs> also, I don't want to grab a cop's junk. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> you're only going to make it worse for yourself, yeah. dude. Yeah, I mean, my my man was had to have been hammered out of his fucking gourd to to think, you know what? The only thing that's going to make this better is to grab... Yeah, I'm not going to say that because fuck you, you're staring at me like an asshole too. No, go ahead. I'm not going to look. All right. Okay. The guy's sitting there and all he's thinking to himself, I mean, he's sitting there he has to be hammered for the best idea to be, I'm already getting arrested. I might as well grab this guy's dick. That's still a clip. I know. Fuck. <laughs> just, there's no way to get around that. <sighs> anyway, I mean, like, right? How, how is that your exit strategy to get out of there because yeah. like he's got a death grip and then he's gonna get away but then they taser him they gas they, they, pepper, they spray pepper sprayed him. him for him to let it let, let the grip go right so he now still he's gets blind he still gets arrested yeah he just got done basically sexually assaulting a police officer yes he's got a whole bunch of federal charges all racked up i mean while the guy is also my personal hero he technically doesn't escape no he gets he's, busted he's again. in jail yeah he doesn't he doesn't even get to run off but like, it's only a twenty five hundred dollar bond hashtag worth it that, i mean kind Kinda, maybe. Maybe this cop was a real dick. Maybe even the judge is like, that cop's a real fucking dick. It's only 2500 Not even Saul Goodman, were he a real human being, could get you off from this type of assault on an officer. Yeah. Like, this just, it's not going to happen. That, or, you know, knowing Kenosha, 2500 bond is like a $50,000 bond. <laughs> probably. Kenosha's not the most. So this guy's probably going to go away for a while. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to go away for a long time. But, but he's he... going to be probably a fucking hero in the joint. Yeah, like that story, the minute yeah. he tells it, there's probably going to be people that'll be like, I'm gonna watch out for you. Yeah, You're yeah. alright. <laughs> yeah, he's he's gonna be known as the, you know, the popo nut crusher, so he's gonna have himself a fine day in the in the, the penal system. No, he's gonna be the hog lump crusher. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm still mad you missed the penal system part of that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. We are so fucking wrong. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what? I'm going to end it on this high note. It's yeah. Not I, mean, that, I mean, I don't know if another, uh, all the other news stories have something to do with something we don't want to talk about. So right. this is it. literally the only thing that we could do yeah. on this news story that will distract That's, you from everything else going on in the world. Yeah. We, uh, there's enough other shit that we, it's the reason why we're not going to bring it up. Yeah. My dick and balls are worth a lot more than $2,500. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they sure are, Bo. <laughs> that wasn't Bo. That was that, Mark. Oh, that was Mark. That was they fancy. sure are, Mark. Yeah. Don't threaten to cut off my cock for two thousand five hundred dollars. Never do that, man. That's that's just too much. That's it's not enough. <laughs> I got Botox in my scrotum. That's it, how they, they that they does that does cost that does run you about twenty five hundred though. <laughs> oh, and one more thing that Lee has to say after yeah. a squeezing like that: yeah. your cum will probably taste better, or maybe like blood. Or, I don't, I don't know. know, man. Ooh. Oh, yeah, let's let's end it now yeah, before yeah, we yeah, yeah before we go too far because now I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> I got this weird pain. Like, yeah, starting I to know. crawl up the side of my stomach. And... <laughs>
Eesh. Ooh. All right, we're going to play the ending Legion promo here. We're going to have a little bit more music that sort of fits in with the decade, but at this point is just some fun stuff I picked out. Yeah. And we'll close out this fucking show. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.
Nothing about automation ever again. There's some autoerotic asphyxiation. Well, yeah, but, you know, that's not the same thing. No, that was just me watching the movie. <laughs> I couldn't even get that one out. Why is, I wondered why the belt was up on the door. All right, well, as long as you're being safe. Mm, uh, yeah, you don't want to use a belt for that then. Oh. You want something that breaks away a lot easier than a belt. You need yeah. a quick release, and that's only going to come with a right knot, and I'm just going to stop. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, I'll draw you a diagram if you're really that interested. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, it helps a little, but like at yeah. your age, it's a little risky. You're an ex-smoker. I don't know how much breath you want to be cutting Oh, off. no, this, this is just for, I would never try it. I'm way too nervous that. I'd fuck that up. So I just, that's for purely academic purposes. The last thing you want is to be found with your pants around your ankles, your hand on your junk, and a noose around your neck. Yeah, take away the noose and then we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> right, the noose is the part that makes the, that embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, that makes that embarrassing. The rest of that's fine. <laughs> don't judge me for how I want to be found. You don't know me. I'm not kink shaming you on your death fetish. Okay, thank you. That'll go perfectly with your. Uh... I'm going to kink shame you for the stabbing fetish, okay? We can play. Play those back and yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Let's leave it on for the ladies whose husbands are forcing them to do this to quote unquote spice up their marriage. Uh, I'm feeling a bit attacked. <laughs> Can, and I also say this, you know, because let's let's give these guys their due. Maybe they did give them orgasms, but, the, you know, they just want more. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, women are very, you know, lucky that way that they can, most of them can go multiple times where most dudes are just bam. And then, you know, they need a sandwich and a Gatorade, <laughs> maybe an hour. <laughs> can he say something complimentary about it? And then, <laughs> then, 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 I think you're then oversharing go, here just a little bit. I feel attacked. <laughs> you're attacking yourself. <laughs> This is perpetuating the per predatory lesbian. Yeah, myth. that all lesbians are preying on young women. Clip. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> good one. God damn it. Oh, that's a good one. Fuck. Okay, I know. Um, Shit, you walked right into the fu fucking door. Well, I stated it in such a way yeah. that, that it, it, while it could be a clip, is still very clear what I'm trying to say. God, fuck. Just you opened up the fucking door and I walked right fucking through it. Five <laughs> fucking years and I'm still doing it. I know. I love it. Oh, fucking hate you. I may have been really upset and down, but that made my night and made me feel really good. So thank you. Fuck. <laughs> go, go. Just keep talking. shaming you on your death fetish. Violate her body and make sure she can't leave. All lesbians are preying on young women. I'm already getting arrested. I might as well grab this guy's dick. <laughs>